Thank you to the APHA Foundation members, contributors, leaders, and supporters for continuing to foster the research and innovation that advances pharmacist patient care services. And thank you for the honor of our team being selected as the winner for the 2020 Pinnacle Award for Health Systems and for the privilege of delivering the Innovation and in Pharmacy Practice Lecture this year. I am Amy Beatty, the Senior Director of Pharmacy Services Population Health at Ohio Health in Columbus, Ohio. Speaking on behalf of the Population Health Pharmacy Services team at Ohio Health, we are honored to be recognized for improving patient outcomes and demonstrating the value of pharmacy teams in the health of populations. We are in very good company with the other winners of this year's 2020 Pinnacle Awards and congratulate our colleagues at the Ohio Northern University HealthWise program for their Pinnacle Award, and Dr. David Now for being selected as the winner of the 2020 Pinnacle Award for Career Achievement. We are truly honored to be recognized alongside these outstanding winners. I have 20 minutes with you today, and my goal in this short time is to inspire, energize, and motivate you all as the perpetual healthcare innovators our patients need us to be. From the first time a natural substance from the earth was used to treat an ailment, pharmacy has ancient roots in perpetually innovating around medicinal chemistry for the clinical improvement of human health. We have seen the evolution of pharmacy from solely medicinal preparation to the clinical discipline of pharmacists recommending medication therapy to improve outcomes, pivoting again to independently managing those medications under collaborative practice and consult agreements, and even prescribing in certain states, to the pursuit of full accountability as a profession around the medication outcomes of all patients, which is where we find ourselves today, on the brink of yet another significant transformation of our profession as we are witnessing strong pharmacy innovators across the nation lean in during this global pandemic, beginning to break down significant barriers for patients' ability to access the services of pharmacists and pharmacy teams. Perpetual is defined as never ending and occurring repeatedly. Innovation occurs in the face of challenges, finding new solutions that work better than the old. In most circumstances, our profession has not had a sustained or consistent revenue stream wrapped around some of our most valuable services in our modern healthcare environment. Hence why I am coining us the perpetual healthcare innovator. We are the perpetual healthcare innovator due to our ability to succeed in an environment that doesn't always incentivize or recognize the significant value we bring to the patient, yet our profession continues to grow and bring value to patients year over year as we globally improve healthcare in an antiquated reimbursement model that has not yet fully placed the patient outcomes in the center of the construct. We have not been sequestered to a deeply rooted status quo that locks us in. We have had to perpetually innovate to recreate ourselves around the needs of the patients, around the evolving complexity of pharmaceuticals, to ultimately take our place as the owners of medication outcomes for our patients. The first College of Pharmacy was established in the United States 199 years ago, now known as the Philadelphia College of Pharmacy. Here we are on the eve of the bicentennial anniversary of our first College of Pharmacy in a global pandemic, ripe with opportunity for the pharmacy profession. As this crowd knows, our profession sits at the heart of this country, with nearly 90% of Americans living within five miles of a community pharmacy. If you include the pharmacist in our health systems, ambulatory practices, home infusion, specialty pharmacies, clinics, our universities, imagine what that percentage might rise to. We are the most accessible healthcare providers in the nation. We are called to be the perpetual healthcare innovator. To keep our place as the perpetual healthcare innovator, we must always keep the patients at the center, 
remember that every patient is personal and find that patient care problem and innovate passionately around it. For me, keeping the patient at the center started 17 and a half years ago when I joined my current health system out of pharmacy school. The mission was focused and singular at Ohio Health to improve the health of those we serve. Throughout my career, I've had a continuous passionate pursuit to connect pharmacists with patients to improve their outcomes. As an ICU pharmacist by clinical training, I was able to personally see and experience the benefit of my efforts, my expert training in medication management, improve and impact a patient outcome right before my eyes. Watching patients fight for their lives while under my care as an ICU pharmacist was life-changing. Their vulnerability, their hopes, dreams hanging in limbo, I felt honored and responsible for being the most knowledgeable pharmacist I could be to give them the best fighting chance of overcoming their illness. Since that time, I've had the privilege of leading teams, of managing pharmacies, of mentoring others, of starting new pharmacy services, all with the mantra of orienting around the patient, keeping the patient at the center for a singular focus to improve their health. Think about patients that have had a second chance because of your professional calling as a pharmacist or a pharmacy technician, a better health outcome because of your dedication to training and always learning the newest and most evidence-based treatments and influencing the care team to make sure those treatments are in play or appropriately discontinued. If we embrace our place as the perpetual healthcare innovator and continue to center our focus on the patient, we know no bounds to what we can accomplish. COVID has been a catalyst to hasten the path we were already on. Patients at the Center is resonating with lawmakers, other clinicians, payers, and the public. We are starting to get good traction on bucking the turf wars and keeping the patients at the Center. We are seeing this through revised legislation, expedited adoption of technology, and payment reform to increase access to pharmacy services and better enable virtual care. We are causing a healthy disruption of the status quo to improve patient outcomes with collaborative care. If we lead the conversation with patient outcomes at the center, we will continue to improve patient care as we have for hundreds of years and make friends and partners in the mission while we do it. Innovation takes energy. It's hard work and takes grit and tenacity to overcome the challenges of change. To keep that passion and energy alive, we must remember that every patient is personal. Each one of us has been touched by personal stories of medications impacting our own or our loved ones' lives, and we can't forget that. That will keep the perpetual innovator fire burning because of those that we love. When I was a child, my family moved from the Southwest to the Midwest, and once we arrived, I began to show signs of asthma. Now, albuterol inhalers were not in wide use yet. And each time I had an asthma exacerbation and failed my theophylline, which was often due to the climate change that was a trigger for me, I landed in the ED with an intramuscular terbutaline shot and several rounds of nebulizers. Not only was not being able to breathe uncomfortable, but as a kid who also didn't like shots, it was a fairly awful experience. But the first time I experienced an albuterol inhaler, once they were available during an office visit, I immediately had positive results. My, my lungs were open, I could breathe, I was amazed. I didn't have to go get a shot. And I got to take the inhaler home. This awesome blue inhaler, which they are still the same color today, 33 years later, was a magical device for me. Oh, I could have used a pharmacist to counsel me on proper inhaler technique thinking back, but once I learned how to properly use my inhaler, I never landed in the ED again as a child. Many of you have had experiences with medications that are life-changing, just like our patients. Every patient is personal. Every patient is you and me. 
my son experienced a seizure when he was only nine days old. And this was a decade ago now. And we rushed him to the emergency department where he was diagnosed with meningitis. Fortunately, this was viral meningitis and was mild and self-limiting. However, the care team came to discuss with us starting our son on an anti-epileptic medication for a single seizure at our home before we brought him in. They did not know how long they would keep him on therapy. There was no clear plan. The team could not speak to the potential long-term effects of a seizure medication for our nine-day-old son. And the reason being, was that the team was having that conversation with us without a pharmacist. Now, fortunately for our son, he has two pharmacist parents, and we made sure to fully evaluate the risks and benefits of a seizure medication and a self-limiting viral picture. Ultimately, we refused to start treatment, and we are pretty sure we got a naughty parent note in our son's medical record but we avoided an unnecessary treatment that could have had potentially lifelong impact, knowing the risks of cognitive impairment of these medications. We need patients to start asking to speak to a pharmacist about a new chronic medication treatment before it started. I see both successes and opportunities for pharmacy in each one of these personal stories. Innovation takes energy and passion. It is not easy to have the grit to see some of these things through. Where have you seen innovation that makes you swell with pride about our profession's dedication to the patient? The tenacity of a pharmacy team member that puts it all out there, again, where we are not always incentivized for our most value added services. Think of those people, those teams, those who have blazed trails where there was no known path. Every patient is personal. So when we think about patients at the center, and that each of those patients are personal, they are loved ones, they are you and me. As the perpetual healthcare innovators, we are called to identify the patient care problem and innovate for an improved outcome. That may be medication therapy management decisions. That may be a better transition so that medication plans don't get lost in the shuffle. That may mean caring for patients with COVID or patients trying hard not to get COVID. That may mean helping a patient with a pre-certification or teaching them how to use an inhaler properly. There are very few places within our healthcare system where we improve patients' health without medications. Therefore, our work is timeless as the medication experts. Innovate around the problem, the metric, the opportunity. Now let's take our population health pharmacy program at Ohio Health as an example. We work with payers, employers, our health plan, our clinically integrated network, and our accountable care organization to orient around the patient and innovate to solve patient care problems. The key is defining the patient care problem and the opportunity to bring value forward as part of the integrated care team. Those two things need to go together, defining the patient care problem and the value added solution that we pharmacy can bring forward. The connection point is data to demonstrate the opportunity objectively and track that improvement to the target. What patient problem can we offer a solution for that benefits the patients, payers, employers, and healthcare system alike? Take our diabetes and asthma Ohio Health Pharmacy programs as an example. Through per member, per month payment models, we are taking accountability for the medication management and ultimately the patient outcomes of these disease states. Let's talk about how the patients win. While our program has clinically reversed diabetes in 15% of our patients who enroll with us, giving them a renewed chance to avoid the complications of diabetes. For the rest of our patients, 88% have achieved hemoglobin A1Cs of less than nine, improving their control and reducing the long-term effects of their disease. For asthma, 88% have achieved good control, 
and plan paid related asthma costs were reduced by an average of $200 per person per year. For our general medication therapy disease management program, we saved $1.6 million in a single year by reducing ED utilization, hospital admissions, disease progression, and acute disease-related events by intervening on suboptimal medication therapy. Again, combining that patient care problem with data to link to the outcomes of interest and tracking to that target. From an actuarial perspective, these population health pharmacy programs result in significant cost containment and reduced financial exposure for the payer and the employer. The program is reducing unnecessary healthcare utilization, such as hospitalizations and ED visits, reserving those acute care settings for the patients that need it most. In our clinically integrated network and accountable care organization, Another patient care problem example revolves around access to appointments in primary care and our endocrinology offices. By offering a pharmacy diabetes management program, we can increase the number of appointments available to the primary care physicians and endocrinology, which results in more patients seen, easier access, improved outcomes, the patients, health system, payers, employers, physicians, everyone wins. The key is starting with the patient at the center and crisply orienting around, crisply orienting the innovative solution around that defined patient care problem. If your identified patient care problem and, and innovative solution doesn't improve things for the patients, the payers, the employers, and the healthcare system, then circle back and redefine your patient care problem and the innovative solution. In population health, when we start speaking about the care of populations, about taking that singular patient to all patients, is a, it is about influencing those together. Our profession will thrive in models where financial risk needs to be managed and outcomes are prioritized because this is how we are wired and trained as a profession. If you want to see a statewide movement where this is occurring, Keep your eye on the state of Ohio as Medicaid managed care plans are starting to pay for clinical pharmacy services in Ohio. The payers are fully engaged and are recognizing that incentivizing the most accessible healthcare providers in the country solves big patient population care problems. The leadership of the Ohio Pharmacists Association, Stuart Beatty and Antonio Chacha, is something to keep on your radar. Payers in Ohio are engaged and recognize that the current healthcare environment doesn't always incentivize or recognize the significant value we bring to the patient. And innovation is occurring around the patient care problems that pharmacy can address. Value-based payment models plus the metrics that drive outcomes are the path forward for our profession. Wrapping up today, my goal is to inspire, energize, and motivate you all to embrace perpetual innovation. Where can we find the wins for patients, payers, employers, and the healthcare system alike? This is what we are good at as the perpetual healthcare innovator. In closing, you all make up our perpetual innovator pharmacy core. We must tire tirelessly pursue innovative solutions to improve medication outcomes for our patients. By the end of this slide, I want you to personally commit to finding one patient care problem in your setting of influence to innovate around, no matter how big or small, with the patient at the center, visualizing that patient as you and me, keeping it personal. I want to celebrate your team and or your innovative solution in the years that come, perhaps with your own Pinnacle Award. So now the call to action for each group in our audience today. Students, residents, and learners, commit to solving those patient care problems in your career, not just in the moment, but pursuing solutions that solve a problem for a population of patients. Find your passionate calling, become the expert in it, and innovate around the patient care problem. Colleges of Pharmacy, how do we train our future pharmacists to navigate the complexities of value-based reimbursement models 
allowing them to create services to produce those win-wins we spoke about. Pharmacy technicians, advocate for your ability to extend pharmacists and improve access to pharmacy programs. Patients need medication experts for better outcomes and you play a major role in producing that bandwidth. Health systems and group health organizations. You have the full ecosystem of care available to your patients. Innovate around the patient journey through that ecosystem. Healthcare is impossibly complex for patients to navigate. That in itself is a big patient care problem. How can we help make sure the medication outcomes are managed expertly throughout that ecosystem? Community pharmacy. Stay strong, you have been in the trenches fighting to improve healthcare access and better medication outcomes for our nation. We need you to continue to passionately innovate around the patient as you have been. Tell your stories, show the data, provide a lens into what altruistic patient care looks like for the public and how our broken reimbursement system is disadvantaging your patients by not incentivizing your most valuable services. State and national pharmacy organizations. We need your help and support through advocacy and visibility to our legislators and to the public what pharmacy services bring to the table for improving patient care. We are going to need to do that through data and stories. This will require a strong member course, so member recruitment by producing member value will be critical. Perhaps we should consider a concerted, unified national marketing campaign to let all of our important patients know pharmacists are there for them as the most accessible healthcare provider in the nation. Payers and legislators, leverage pharmacists as providers. Patients only have better medication outcomes to gain as you will further mobilize an extensively trained workforce that is wired to innovate around the patient care problem related to medication outcomes. Employers, challenge the status quo of your health plan administrator. What are they doing differently to change the trajectory of patient outcomes related to medications? Advocate to engage and incentivize pharmacist expertise to improve the health of your employee population. We are the perpetual innovator in healthcare. We will continue with tenacity, transforming our models continuously to pursue optimized medication outcomes for our important patients. Embracing this amazing role, this tough road for our patients, a higher calling is our future. And great things don't happen when they are handed to us. They are fought for, pursued passionately, we will continue to pursue optimized medication outcomes for our patients as the perpetual innovator in healthcare. It is a rightful place. I would love to hear from you all on what large or small innovation item you will be adopting this year as a member of our Perpetual Innovator Pharmacy Corps. My email address is included on this slide. That is my challenge to you. Let's mark the 200th anniversary of the first School of Pharmacy in the U.S. as our most successful year of tenacious innovation yet. Thank you.